This video is the third in a series in which we have explained reversible isothermal gas expansions. In this video we simply do a couple of numerical examples to illustrate reversible exp expansions and then uh, we justify why we call these processes reversible. All right, so here's the example. We're going to have a gas expansion, uh, this is not going to be an ideal gas, uh, where the gas is going to expand from 10 liters to 20 liters. And uh, there's two moles of the gas and the temperature is 298 Kelvin, uh, which means that the uh, pressure, according to the ideal gas equation of state, will be uh, 4.89 atmospheres. Now, we're going to let this gas expand in two different ways. Both of them are going to be isothermal, so the temperature will not change. But in one of them, we're going to do it against the constant external pressure of one atmosphere. Okay, that will be that case. And in the second case, we're going to do this reversibly, which we know will provide maximum work. All right, so let's uh, calculate the work in each one of those two expansions. First, against the constant external pressure of one atmosphere. Well, work is simply minus external pressure multiplied by the change in volume, right? That is that the external pressure is, is one atmosphere. The change in volume will be final volume minus initial volume. This is equal to minus 10 atmosphere liter, which you can transform to joules uh, to get 1.01 kilojoule. Okay, so that work in this particular case will be minus 1.01 kilojoule. It's a negative work because energy is being lost in the system uh, to the surroundings as you push out that piston. Okay, something that we can also do is to try to calculate uh, heat. Okay, notice that this is an isothermal expansion and because the energy, the internal energy of uh, an ideal gas only depends on temperature, if the temperature doesn't change, then the energy does not change either which means that the change in energy is zero and uh, heat is equal to minus work. Okay, so we could come here and say, well, uh, the heat in this process is plus 1.01 kilojoule. All right, very good. That is uh, your regular gas expansion against the constant external pressure. Now we're going to repeat this expansion, but we're going to do it differently. Instead of having a constant external pressure of one atmosphere pushing down on that piston as it's uh, drawn out, Instead, we're going to do this reversibly. And again, this is an idealized process that can never happen in nature because it will uh, take an infinite amount of time. The way to do this would be as follows. You would put here an infinite number of infinitesimal masses and then remove one at a time while you let the system equilibrate in between those removals of mass. Eventually, if you do proceed that way, you will go from here to there. Again, it will take an infinite amount of time but then you would guarantee that that would give you maximum work because at any point uh, during that expansion, the external pressure is as large as it possibly can be for that particular point in the expansion. Okay, great. So uh, we derived in a prior video how to um, calculate the external, uh, sorry, the uh, work in a reversible isothermal expansion. And the question that we had for that was like this. This is going to be equal minus NRT natural log of the final volume over the initial volume. Okay, so for this particular case we have that uh, those numbers will be uh, 2 mole. R is the ideal gas constant 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. The temperature is 298 Kelvin. And then uh, we have to take the natural log of the ratio of the volumes which is going to be 20 liters over 10 liters. Okay. So when you do that, you will get that your work uh, reversible uh, will be equal to minus 3.43 kilojoules. Now this is interesting. Notice that in the reversible uh, path, we have obtained more work than we did in the irreversible path against the constant external pressure. That makes sense because we know that the reversible process will give the maximum work. Okay. We can also calculate here what the uh, heat would be, and in this case, uh, the heat would be equal to uh, uh, the minus work. This is still isothermal, so that still applies, and the first law gives that. And what I'm actually going to do here is uh, write the explicit uh, form of that reversible heat. Okay, notice that it will be uh, the reversible work, okay, which is this, with a change in sign, so that it's going to be NRT, 
nudge log of V2 uh, over V1 or V final uh, over V initial. All right, this equation that you have right here, this V in equal to Q rev, is going to play an important role, a most important role when we talk about entropy. So it's quite important that you uh, know that equation and write that down because it's going to come up once we study the definition of entropy. Okay, it will be related to that reversible heat. Okay, uh, the number here is going to be equal to Q rev uh, plus 3.43 kilojoules. All right, so again, this uh, numerical example tells you that uh, uh, you always, always are going to get less work than in the idealized reversible uh, case where you get maximum work. All right, so the question now is uh, why do we call this reversible? Okay, uh, and uh, to do that, what we're actually then going to uh, carry out here is the reverse process, right? So we're now going to start uh, right here. That's two, will be 2 moles, 298 Kelvin. The pressure in this case will be half of this, okay? So that is going to be uh, uh, 2.45 uh, atm, right? And instead of uh, expanding, we're going to compress, okay? So that will be the expansion. And now we're going to be talking about compression, right? So the opposite way. And we're going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to try to compress this reversibly. And then we're going to try to compress this against a constant external pressure and see what happens to the values of the works uh, that we get out of that. All right, let's do first uh, the reversible process. Okay, so uh, reversible. Well, uh, what you will have here would be that the work that you need to do here is still minus nRT, natural log of uh, final volume over the initial volume. Okay, notice that uh, this doesn't change. That is still two moles. R doesn't change. Temperature is still 298 Kelvin. The only thing that's, that changes from the expansion to the compression is that that thing is flipped. Okay, the initial volume, the initial volume here will now be the final volume, and our initial volume here was the final volume in the expansion. Right. So the only thing that that is actually going to do is change the sign of your work. Okay, but the value of the work will be exactly the same the absolute value, right? So that work now is going to be 3.43 kilojoules, okay? But it will be positive because you need to uh, transfer some energy to the system as work in order to be able to push the, push the piston down, okay? All right, so the reversible work that we get out of this will be equal to plus 3.43 kilojoules in this particular compression, right? And now we have to do this against the constant external pressure and compare that to the work that we obtained out of the expansion against the constant external pressure. All right, so that work uh, will be equal to uh, minus the external delta B. But here comes something that is very interesting. Notice that in the expansion, we were simply using here an external pressure of uh, one atmosphere, right? So uh, we will be tempted to say, well, uh, we just have to apply here one atmosphere in order to push this piston down and try to calculate the work that way. But notice that if you do that, uh, this process, uh, this gas actually will not compress. Notice that initially, the pressure of the gas is 245, uh, 2.45 atmospheres. Okay, that means that the uh, pressure with, with which the gas is pushing that piston out is actually much larger than one atmosphere. Right, so one atmosphere alone is not going to be able to compress the gas. What you need to do is to apply an external pressure that is larger than the gas internal pressure in order to push the piston down. As a matter of fact, if you want to go all the way to 10 liters where the pressure of the gas becomes 4.89, the absolute minimum pressure that you would need externally to elicit this change will be 4.89 atmospheres. Any pressure lower than that will not take you to this, uh, to this uh, final point. Okay, so our, our, our external pressure is going to be just the minimum uh, that we can uh, use in order to be able to push the piston down and get to that point, right? And that external pressure has to be uh, 4.89 or larger, otherwise you will not get the full compression. Okay, so let's choose 4.89, which is the limiting case. And here what you have is that this will be minus 4.89 atmosphere, change in volume, and then the final volume is equal to 10 liters, the initial volume is 20 liters, Okay, so uh, this is going to be equal to minus 48.9 atmosphere liter, 
which you can transform to uh, joules or kilojoules per mole, okay, which is, and this is going to give, uh, actually there's going to be a positive number, right, notice that the parenthesis is negative, you have a negative sign, so that will be positive, you actually have to work, uh, the surroundings have to deposit energy into the system, and that is a positive work. Okay, uh, anyways, this is going to be 4.95 kilojoules, positive. Okay, so we come here and say that that work, in the irreversible case, will be uh, plus 4.95 kilojoules. Now it comes to the four, why we call this process reversible uh, uh, and why we call the other processes irreversible. Okay, notice that in the reversible work, uh, in the reverse, reversible process, the work that you get out in the expansion is exactly the same uh, work that you need to put to compress the system back to the initial state. Right? So there's no uh, uh, change in work, there's no loss or gain in work uh, when you do the process back and forth. Okay, that is, that's why this process is reversible. There's no loss or gain in energy overall. However, uh, in the irreversible case against the constant axon pressure, that is not the case. Notice that when you expand, you only get about one uh, kilojoule of energy's work uh, but when you compress, you need to put almost five kilojoules, right? So the balance of work is not zero. This is clearly not a reversible process. All right, so to summarize this video, we have uh, uh, looked for a numerical application of uh, reversible isothermal gas expansions. We have seen that uh, they provide maximum work, and we have also uh, seen why they are called reversible.